Daniel, how's it going, man? Daniel, I'm good, man. How are you? I'm great, man. It's so good to see you. Thank you so much for uh, staying up for us. Hi, yeah, no worries, guys. Yeah, why don't uh, hey everyone? Why don't you go ahead and say hi to Angelo? Hi. Hello. Welcome. Angelo, hey, 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 what's going on, everyone? We're in your future. It's Saturday here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You want some stock tips? <laughs> Can you turn it up? Well, well, it's it's a Saturday here too, mate. It's just good. Very early on Saturday. <laughs> oh, that's right, that's right. Thanks again, man. Thanks again. I, I hope you had a good nap. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, no worries, mate. Thank, thanks for having me, guys. It's a, it's a pleasure. Can yeah. you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you well, yeah, just don't, let me just double check a connection real quick. Okay, I think we're good to go. Okay, Angelo, yeah. Um, I thought maybe we start off today and uh, maybe just tell little people uh, tell people about your story a little bit and how you got started. I think it's a real interesting story. Um, if you, if you don't mind just sure. starting off there and uh, and then maybe tell little people what what you're doing right now. Sure. So pretty much, guys, um, how I got started in real estate was just over four years ago. Um, you know, I quit school at a very young age. Um, I was only 14 years old when I quit school, and the reason why I quit school was to you know um, chase my dreams in becoming a professional soccer player which I did achieve at the age of 18. I actually played professional soccer in Hong Kong for wow. six months. Nice. Um, so that was a dream come true, as you can imagine. I mean, there's a lot of kids out there, you know, dreaming to become professional soccer players that never become a professional soccer player, and I actually did. Wow. Now, you know, unfortunately, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Unfortunately, you know, things didn't work out there, and, uh, you know, I, I kind of left Hong Kong, and I moved back to Australia, um, and when I moved back to Australia, I just decided that I had to find something else in life because I didn't think that playing soccer um, any further would, would give me the, the, the lifestyle that I wanted because, you know, I just thought there's just too much competition out there and I won't achieve the level of, of success that I was hoping to. So, you know, without having any formal education whatsoever, I, you know, went out to try and find the job. And the only job that I could find was, you know, laboring on a dirty construction site in, in you know, commercial buildings in downtown Sydney. Right, right. Um, so I was pretty much laboring for, for a good two years. Uh -huh. And, you know, the life-changing moment came to me when I got given a book by a good friend of mine, which was Rich Dad, Poor Dad, by Robert Kiyosaki. Okay? Dad, Dad, yeah. And as soon as I read that book, that just kind of brainwashed me um, and it started... You know, it got me thinking about business. It got me thinking about finance. It got me thinking about assets, you know, versus liabilities and, and how I can invest my money for my money to work for me instead of me working for my money. And, and you know, don't forget, I was working as a laborer. I was working all day, every day. You know, it's, it, it's a tough job. It's a dirty job. A lot of the people that you that you work with, a lot of your co-workers aren't educated. Right. You know, they will talk down on you and they won't treat you well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So... You know, what, what I did there is I just kind of started reading more and more books. I started attending seminars. I started attending conventions, expos. I started asking questions of people who are where I wanted to be, right? And I, I pretty much am where I am today because of those questions, because of those seminars. And, you know, Jim Ron has a saying. He says, formal education will earn you a living while personal development will give you a lifestyle. And that is something that I focused on. I focused on personal development. I focused on getting myself you know, to be where I am today. I focused on talking to people who are where I wanted to be. Right, right, um, you right. know, and, and one thing led to another. As I kind of started associating myself with people that were in business, finance, real estate, they had their own companies, they were doing really well. You know, I, I got a job with, um, who was one of my first mentors. He's got a $50 million company right now in, yeah. in Sydney, Australia. Uh -huh. And he kind of took me under my wing. He's also a young guy, only three years older than me. And, you yeah. know, he believed in me and he loved my passion. And, and I kind of worked under him for, for a good year. And right. he taught me the, the foundations of real estate. And, you know, I, I must say that a lot of the things that I know today um, is because of him. And, yeah. and the foundations of real estate that he taught me would be buying uh, right. Finding deals, right. negotiating, talking to buyers, mm -hmm. talking to realtors, you know, project managing rehabs, cutting costs on rehabs, and just pretty much everything and anything that you could possibly imagine, um, you know, in real estate. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, you know, I, I guess, you know, me being the entrepreneurial person that I am and, and, and you know, just having this crazy, crazy head, <laughs> I'm always looking at doing all kinds of things, right? I'm, right. I'm like in a hundred places at once. Mm -hmm. I wanted to venture out on my own. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah. what I did is I combined... The, the experience that I had in, in laboring right. um, and construction 
with uh-huh. the knowledge that I gained of working for, for this um, real estate investor as his apprentice, yeah. and that kind of led me to flipping, okay. right? Um, and you know, here we are today. I'm, I'm based in Toledo, Ohio right now. Uh-huh. I've got a company. It's called Ohio Cashflow. Um, you know, we buy rundown, distressed properties. We fix them up to a great standard. We've got in-house property management that gets the properties tenanted. Uh-huh. And then we pretty much work with investors from all around the world, East Coast, West Coast, UK, Canada, Australia. And we sell them, you know, turnkey properties predominantly here in Toledo. Right, but in right. the very near future, we're looking at expanding, you know, further into Ohio, potentially franchising out into Michigan and Indiana. Yeah. Yeah. What is it about Toledo? <laughs> very good, very good. What, what, um, what was so it about? Daniel, yeah. Yeah, great question, mate. Look, when once again, I'm just going to go back to when I first started my entrepreneurial journey. You know, okay, the, yeah. the first mentors that I had, they all advised me that don't focus on the stats and demographics of a particular area, deal, or business model. Okay, yeah. um, because at the end of the day, it's never the stats and demographics that are going to cost you money. It's yeah. always doing business and trusting the wrong people. Okay, yeah. the saying goes, "Business is easy; people make it difficult." So. <laughs> Before I jump into any new venture, before I jump into any new joint venture, like as in a deal or or a business venture, I always make sure that I have the right people around me that believe in the same bigger picture and vision that I do. There's four things that I look for. Loyalty, honesty, no greed, and respect. Okay? Uh I'll repeat them. Loyalty, Uh honesty, no greed, and respect. Uh Once I find people that possess those four traits, um, then and only then will I start to look at the actual stats and demographics of a particular deal, area, or a business venture, right? right? right. So in this case, Toledo, um, when I moved to the US, I had no bloody clue where Ohio even was, not even, (laughs) not not, not to mention even Toledo, right? But I made sure that I established the trust and relationships with key people on the ground that are going to be my foundation of of whatever it is that I'm looking at doing here. And at the time, I was just looking at investing. Mm -hmm. Ohio Cashflow, the business that we've got right now, that Mm -hmm. kind of evolved as I continued growing my relationship with all of these individuals. So that's, you know, that's the short answer to Toledo. Why Toledo? Um, you know, once I found these individuals yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, we, we kind of had the same things in common, then I started looking at the numbers in the deals yeah. and, you know, I don't yeah. want to, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, spru- uh, talk too much about my market and, and yeah. where I work because that's not the point of this interview. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, what the reality of the fact is, mate, I have not found um, uh, any – I have not found numbers in any other market across the U.S. Mm-hmm. Um, that are better – than, they, than what they are here in Toledo, yeah. and I haven't found better quality of areas and properties for the prices that we can buy here in Toledo. Right, right, All right. right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one, uh, one thing uh, from your Bigger Pockets interview that I was really impressed with was that process that you went through vetting people before you work with them. And I remember you were telling Josh and Brandon about a technique that you used uh, with your emails uh, and, and just like reaching out to people and telling them, Hey, look, I'm not looking to do anything with you right now, but maybe in six, eight, 12 months, uh, you know, down the line, maybe we can work together. Can you talk a little bit about how that process works and and why you sort of adopted that strategy and and what the results of that were? Sure, Daniel. Great question. Well, mate, look, um, uh, trust, okay? Trust is the key word here. Trust is built over time. Not over one phone call, email, Skype call, or meeting, okay? So, um, you know, I I strongly believe, and and unfortunately, you know, here in the U.S. and when I was in Australia, there's a lot of people looking at making a quick profit, okay? And us as real estate investors, in order for us to get to where we need to be, right, buying one or two properties from someone is not going to give us financial freedom, okay? If you're purchasing properties in the Midwest, you have to buy 10, 15, or 20 properties. And once you buy these properties, you still need those people on the ground to hold your hand throughout the lifetime of the investment. Mm -hmm, So mm -hmm. anyone looking at just selling you one or two properties very quickly is not the right person that you want to be doing business with. Mm -hmm. Because as I said, you need someone that will be willing to hold your hand throughout the lifetime of the investment and that will be there for you 5, 10, 15 years later down the track. If they're not going to be there for you, well, at least they have to have a good infrastructure um, wherever they are. So that infrastructure can assist and continue serving your needs moving forward. So that's kind of the basis of of that question Mm -hmm. that I guess I believe that a lot of investors should pop is, you know, uh, are you willing to spend enough time 
building trust and relationship, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, trust and relationship with me before I make that next step, before I make that decision, six months, nine months, 12 months from now. Yeah. And to be honest with you, any genuine operator yeah. and anyone yeah. that is it's not looking for a quick profit yeah. that is indeed for this business for delayed yeah. gratification will say, of course, yeah. I'm more than happy to spend that time and build that relationship with you. Because don't forget, mate, we're talking about someone's life. Here. Yeah. I know this because I've got fellow Australians that, you know, have horror stories of that of them losing their lifetime savings right. here in the US trusting the wrong people. Right, right. So, and the people day asking me about what do I think about a particular area and I say, you're getting it wrong guys. You yeah. have to make sure that you have the right people and that those right people have your best interest at heart. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and look, I, I can tell you this mate, real estate is, is going to be a roller coaster ride. There's going to be many ups and downs, mm -hmm. okay? But at the end of the day, you want to have the right people that have your best interests at heart, that are going to communicate with you properly, and that will make sure that they eliminate any hurdles that eventually come, you know, on, on, on that journey. Right, right, um, right. So, you know, as I said, going back to what you initially asked, it's a great question just to eliminate the non-genuine professionals looking for a quick profit. Right. Um, and, and I believe that 99% of them will be eliminated yeah. with that one question because right. no one is willing to wait to build that relationship. They all want to make money and they all want to make money now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm actually, uh, I started adopting that technique myself when, uh, when I started reaching out to operators and I just borrowed straight from your book and I tell them, hey, look, I'm not looking to invest next week. Uh, but maybe six months from now, nine months from now, a year from now, uh, if, if we build the right relationship, this might be something I'm interested in. And yep. I feel like, yeah, I think that it helps to sort of unearth motivations quickly. You know, you can kind of see uh, what type of uh, responses I get from that. And, and, and that sort of lets me know where, where they're at in terms of what they're thinking about. Oh, definitely, mate. Definitely. I mean, it's, it's a very powerful question. Um, it's, it's one that I've used. And look, uh, you know, I guess I get a lot of people kind of also pop that question up to me now when we look at working with investors and yeah. look, a ton of investors, unfortunately, mate, a lot of people want something for nothing these days and, yeah. and as much as I want to help everyone, you know, yeah. I, I, I really go out of my way to do as much as I can, but mate, having yeah. four full-time staff to run three different business ventures, yeah. I mean, I get over a hundred yeah. emails when I wake up wow. every morning. Wow. It's just not feasible for me to to help everyone with my advice. Right, right. Um, so, you know, I, I can kind of eliminate people that I know that are just trying to suck as much information out of me as possible, but yeah. don't really have a genuine interest in yeah. working with me yeah. or our company or whatever it is that we're doing. So, you know, that's another thing that operators like myself have to look out for too, because right. there is a lot of people, mate, out there that, that, you know, want a lot of information, but they don't have a genuine interest of, of working right. with you. And as I said, mate, you know, right. You, right now I'm looking at helping myself and helping my, my business and helping the people around me before I go out and, and save the world. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you have to uh, make sure the business is is strong first before you can help out other people. Of course, mate. Of what course. what have been uh, what have been some of your uh, uh, success stories or experiences uh, working with overseas investors? Like, how's that gone, and how's that process been? Yeah, mate. Well, look, we're only a young company, Daniel. We only started Ohio Cash in April of last year. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we've, we've got a handful of investors. We've got around seven investors on board, 11 properties that, that you know, we've sold thus far on the management. And, and what we've created thus far, mate, is, is a huge hype and buzz. I mean, people mm -hmm. are banging down our door wanting to work with Ohio Cash Flow because, mm -hmm. I mean, we, we, I believe we offer one of the best products out there. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know anyone in the country that offers turnkey properties at market or below market value, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? And I also don't know anyone in the country that turns down more investors than they take on. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have turned down over 15 investors in the last six months. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, the reason for that is, mate, you know, I believe that where your eyes and ears, heart and soul on the ground here in Toledo. Right. And if someone can't trust us, well, yeah. do not invest with us, yeah. right? And that's what I always tell everyone. Um, you know, and, and I guess at the end of the day, if, if someone wants to be too in, or involved with the process, I also suggest that they should just do it themselves. Right. It's pointless investing for a turnkey company if yeah. you want to be so involved. <laughs> so, you know, we kind of have to evaluate uh, 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 certain investors and see if we're a right fit for them. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Um, and as I said, we're known for... Yeah. Yeah. We're 
not for turning down more business than we take on. But, mate, look, UK Investor on board. He's bought one of our turnkey properties. Um, we've done a joint venture thus far on an A-class retail flip. We're just about to close on that property on Wednesday. He's nice. going to make a nice... Uh, hello. Ten thousand dollar cash lump sum profit. Um, look, mate. Uh, everything we do is 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 very limited. Right. So every. About my direct email, they call me. Hello. Hello. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah. Can you, you hear me? Yeah, you hello, hello. It. Sorry. Hello. Uh, I lost you. Can you hear me? Yeah. Let me. Uh. Hello. Hello. <laughs> uh, yep, I can hear. Can you hear me? Sorry, a slight technical difficulty. Sorry, Angelo. Hey, can I can I call you? Can I call you right back? Sorry about that. Can I call you right back? I'm gonna change uh, Wi-Fi's. Yep, sounds good. Let's restart. Yeah, I'll call you right back.